Okay, so today we're going to learn about inheritance. So essentially, this is an OOP um, concept, object oriented programming concept. And last lesson, we made a class uh, that was called a dog. And it had a breed and a color. But if we wanted to subclass, if we wanted to make a class out of this, today we're going to call it, uh, we're going to make it a puppy. Now a puppy is a dog, so we, we can actually take characteristics of the stuff that we have of the dog, and we don't have to redefine it for the puppy. So for example, a puppy also has a color and it also has a breed. But a puppy might have some other characteristics that a dog does not. For example, um, not sure if you know this or not, but puppies actually have to be dewormed. So they have to have um, medicine so that they get rid of their worms. This is, this is what they do with all puppies. Now dogs presumably um, would have already been dewormed, so I guess you don't need to worry about that for dogs, although in the real world that's not necessarily true. But for this example, we're just going to worry about uh, deworming puppies only. So let's take a look at uh, how this works in terms of the code. So here is our code. And here it, we're creating our on line four, we're creating the dog class. And again, we have a class variable or a class field and that all the dogs that are going to share, all the instances of the dog class are going to share. And then here is my init method, which is called when I create a dog. So, you know, when I go equals dog bracket bracket. In this case, I have some default arguments for the color and the breed. And I'm setting those values. And one more thing. I want to specify, this is actually something peculiar, and we'll get into this more later. But I find that beginning programmers tend to always use the term self inside uh, any function in a class. Now, this isn't necessarily something that you need to do. So ask yourself, when do you need to use the word self? And the answer is, when you want that variable to exist for all instances of the class and you want that variable accessible in every function of the class. So in other words, if it's a temporary calculation, like, I mean, let me give you an example. If, for example, I said something like, you know, uh, you know, uh, x equals um, 4 times 3 take away 2, you know, 2, or whatever. It doesn't matter. But it's just some calculation that I'm doing. I mean, this is trivial, but that's not the point. The point is, is that if I needed to do this calculation, and I needed that x for some value that I was going to send to a function, and then let's say, um, Let's say, for example, if that function was part of the class, so I would go self dot foo x. I don't I don't need to actually do self here. I don't need to do this. So I, why? Because this this calculation that I'm doing for x is just a temporary value that I need to calculate, but I don't need that to be an attribute of the class. I don't need every instance of dog to contain that value and it be referenceable or, or accessible. So I just we'll, we'll, we'll discuss this more in the future, but for now, I just thought I'd mention it just because I want to make clear that you don't have to put self for every single thing that you type inside a class. And we'll go over this more in the future because I find this is sometimes creates uh... all right so let's move on here 
here is the del. And by the way, I just wanted to say, usually, unless you have a specific use case for it, as I do here, where I'm subtracting one from a, a class variable, you don't usually um, create under our uh, dunder del. But you always have to create dunder in it. Okay. Uh, here is the speak method for my dog, and the do all dogs say woof woof. And if I want to print a dog, that's what's going to get printed. Once again, I want to reiterate, because you guys are new to uh, object-oriented programming, notice every single function starts with self. OK? That's important. Now, here, I'm making a new class. Notice the indentation. This is not part of the, this is not inside the dog class. So how do I inherit? It's so simple. All I do is notice up here for dog, there's no brackets here, okay? Whereas here for puppy, puppy there's brackets and I'm putting dog in the brackets. That means that puppy is now inheriting from dog. Now, here's one important point that you should always remember. You kind of have to write this in stone. Any time you create an init method for a subclass, you, the first thing you must do in that init method is call the base class's init method. So in other words, we have to call this function from in here. That's the first thing we have to do. Now, there's two ways we can do that. The one way we can do that is by explicitly calling, going dog dot, or sorry, dog dot dunder init dunder, and then we send the arguments. Notice we're sending these arguments that were passed to us from the init arguments for puppy. Also notice that puppy happens to have one extra argument that dog did not. But also notice that it has the same arguments that dog did. So I'm still passing the color and the breed. But, I, but notice that when I call the initializer for the base class, or the parent class, by the way, those two terms are interchangeable. You can say base class or parent class. Um, I'm not sending wormed because that's not going to make any sense to this. So wormed is not a part of the dog class. So now um, I can either do it this way explicitly by going dog dot and I have to pass self as well or I could do it this way and I've commented that this out because you don't want to do both but one of them. You can actually use the super function and that'll actually figure out that this is a dog and it'll also by the way notice here this is easy to forget that you don't actually have to pass self when you do super function dot okay and I put a comment here so what's the advantage disadvantage well if you write your function like this or if you write your init function like that then if you happen to change this, let's say I, let's say I change this to, um, uh oh, let's say I change that. Okay, hold on, wait. Uh, let me come up here and change this to animal. I know I don't have an animal class to inherit from, but let's just say I did. Then, then this would be wrong then I can't type dog here. I'd have to change this to animal. Whereas if I left it like this, if I left super, now it's okay. It figures out that it's animal. So that's the, that's the purpose behind that. Okay? Um, you can use either one, whichever you prefer. They do the same thing, one or the other. Notice also, though, that after I call the the init method for the base class, I'm also uh, taking care of the extra passed argument, which is wormed. So now 
I'm doing that on line 29 because that's some extra information I need to deal with that was passed to the init method for the puppy. Also notice what's really interesting here is I'm actually what's called overloading the speak method. So notice for a dog, speak is going to go woof woof, but speaking for a puppy is going to just go rough. It's different. If I don't define speak, if I don't overload it, that's a term to say that I've written the same function again to specify that the puppy's speak is different from the dog speak. If I, if I don't do that, then if I call speak, so in other words, if I totally remove this, uh, if I just, you know, commented these two lines out altogether, now if I created a puppy and I got the puppy to speak, it would just do what the parent would do, which is woof woof. Okay? But sometimes, the point of this is that sometimes it's advantageous to change the behavior of the same function name for a subclass or for a child class. Okay, so notice these terms again. Subclass, child class, same thing. Parent class, base class, same thing. So here is str. Again, this is different than this one, okay, for the dog. And now I just have a regular function here. I'm calling birth, and uh, I'm creating a couple of dogs inside this function. And here is my main code. Here's, so I'm creating two dogs here, making them speak, printing out, printing them out, finding out how many dogs are alive before the function call, do the function call, find out how many dogs are alive after the function call. And then, um, in addition, I'll create another dog here. Um, maybe we should rename this. Okay, no, actually we'll leave this with Fido5. Then print some information, make two puppies, make one of the puppies speak, print one of the puppies, and we're done. So let's, let's actually run this code now, and uh, let's see what it looks like. So first thing is we don't have, we don't actually have a, uh, any print statements in the init here, as we did before. My code's kind of messed up because I shortened the column because you're looking at the output on the right-hand side. But essentially, uh, here line 48 is my first output over here, woof woof. 49 is my next output, so the two dogs speak. Then I print out the two dogs. So the first one was the default dog, the white mutt, and the second one was the, specif the specific dog, the black lab. Before the function, I have two dogs alive. Dogs alive inside the function, I have four dogs alive because now three and four are born inside the function birth. And then afterwards, after the function, I have only two dogs alive again. So uh, the garbage collector destroys dogs three and four after this function is finished. Um, after the function, I have, no wait, what's the next thing that gets printed? Yeah. So then I create dog five, and then I say how many dogs are alive here. So that's three. Um, and three dogs are still alive. And then I make two puppies. And then the, what's, what's interesting is we didn't put actually how many puppies, how many dogs are alive after this. The puppy speaks, and notice it says rough, and we print the puppy, and it says this puppy's a white mutt. But we didn't actually say how many dogs are alive. So let's change the code. And um, let's, uh-oh, deleted the wrong. Okay, so in this case, notice here when I, when I put in uh, line 60 here, after puppies are born, 
there's five dogs alive. So in other words, uh, it's working in the sense that when I'm actually here, let me get rid of this thing and then, yeah, so this looks better. So essentially, what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that when we create the puppy, this line is actually being activated. That's because in our puppy init method, we're calling this line 27. That's why we're adding one to the number of dogs, the, the class variable dog, not the instance variable. OK? OK, so one more thing I should mention, and that is the difference between lines 27 and 28. Super is actually um, more versatile in the sense that it actually works for multiple inheritance too. So here's a website that kind of gives an example of multiple inheritance where we're, we're, in, we're creating a dog from two different classes. We're creating a dog class from two different classes. And in this class, now you would say, well, which one are you going to use? So in this case, with multiple inheritance, the, the super function call is um, more versatile in that way, okay, for multiple inheritance. Okay, so here we have a, an example of a, what we're doing here is we're creating a class called my app. It's basically inheriting. We're applying what we've learned, right, in terms of object-oriented programming. This, this new class that we're creating called my app inherits from FL window. So in other words, it, can, it has all the stuff that FL window has. Now, when we create the init method for this new class we're making, the first thing you have to do is you have to call the base class's init method. So now here is the FL window base class, and we're calling init on that. And what are we passing it? Well, remember, we have to pass self, because we're not doing super here. And then we have to pass the width, the height, and the label. Remember, though, that the, there was two different ways to initialize a, an FL window. You could, you could do it um, where you went x, y, width, and height, and then the label. But the other way, and by the way, the label's always optional. The, lab, the label's always optional. But um, the other way that you did it is you could simply just go width and height, and then the label's optional as well. You don't have to specify x and y. Now, if we don't specify x and y, there's no reason why we couldn't put it in here and call, another, call a different one. But it, but this is fine too, okay? Because um, obviously, like if, if I actually did something like this here, um, for example, I could go 0 comma 0. Now this is kind of like, is this okay? Well, now you're calling a, the different version of the initializer for FL window, even though you're not specifying x and y. So if I wanted to do that, the way I'd probably do that is I would actually specify x and y here. And then I would, instead of putting 0, 0 and hard coding that, I would put x and y here. OK? But now this, w this is not going to work. OK? Because now, now it's going to say, well, you're not specifying x and y. So I'm, I'm just going to uh, leave those as they are. Uh, now I'm calling, now I'm going self.begin, okay? And, and you have to ask yourself now, why am I going self.begin? What, what would I have put here before in procedural programming? And the answer is, I would have put the window. So ask yourself this, what variable name is the window? Well, let's find out come down here to line 21, 
And now on line 21, we're saying app equals my app. So app is the instance of FL window. So essentially, app is now getting passed to self. So self is app. So this is like saying app.begin, app.but. That's what's happening here. So, but what you need to remember here, and also this is important as well, is that self in this case is an FL window. Okay? So I'm actually calling this method dot begin on an FL window. So I create the button, and do I want every instance of my app to have a button? Yes, I do. And I now set the callback for that button. And notice also that the callback function name is also inside the function. This is a common mistake too. Doing this is a mistake. Because this is how I would do it in procedural programming. But the fact is, is that this function is actually a part of the class. So I have to put self here. And then I'm changing the color of the button, okay? And then I'm creating another widget, an input button, or an input widget, and so I can type into it. And then here, notice I'm specifying the callback that I specified that I was going to make on line 11. And again, notice that because it's a class method, it has to start with self. Okay, in this case, wid is the argument that is passed to it. In other words, it's the widget that received the event. So in this case, it would be bot. Okay, but interestingly, right, this, this comment is actually not really exactly true. Wid is actually self.bot. So, I could do it this way, or I mean, I could just copy this line and replace wid with uh, self.but. Okay? So, this is the cool thing is that everything inside the class is now accessible in any function. And you'll see that this will actually uh, um, prevent us or like um, exclude us. So maybe a better way of explaining that is it allows us to avoid the problem of having to use global because now we can access everything with self if we need to. So now here's the cool thing. Once we've made this, okay, once we've made this class, now um, I can simply create the class here and call app.show and then run. In fact, I could even, listen, I mean, I think it's actually probably better th the way it is here, but I could, for example, simply take out app.show and right here put app.show, but this is wrong now, right? So instead of putting app.show, um, what would I need to put here? Yeah, it would have to be it would have to be self dot show. Oops. There. Now rec recognize though that doing this essentially uh, takes away the ability that essentially on line twenty three, as soon as you create my app, it's going to show right away, right? Whereas, let's say for example, you might want to do something else and show it a bit later in your code. Now you don't have that flexibility. So it's up to you which way you want to do it. In any case, let's run the code. I definitely, I would give you one advice. I definitely would not put FL run inside the window class, the, the window subclass. That wouldn't be a good idea. Um, that should be outside. Um, the scheme here I've left outside as well, and that's because what if I want to make another class? I want this to apply to everything. Uh, I don't think I'd put the scheme in there either. Um, so that's it. So let's let's run this program.
Okay, so now we can see everything at once. So in, the, in this case, um, notice that if I click here, what it's doing is the callback is basically taking whatever's inside the input, the text inside the input, so whatever's in here, and it's putting it as the, the label of the button. So what's in here right now? Nothing. So if I click it, the label becomes nothing. If I type in hello here and I click this, the label becomes hello. If I, if I change it to something else, that's what the label becomes. Essentially, that's what this code is doing. But the purpose of this is not so much to show you the complexity of the button and the input. We've done that before. The purpose of this is to show you how to create a class. Now, there is one other benefit to this, and I'll show you. OK, here's my point. If you do if name, if dunder name dunder equals string dunder main dunder, and now you put this code here, what I can now do is I can import this file. I can import PYT, PYFLTK example, which is the name of my file, and then I can, um, I can actually import this class. And, and use it somewhere in another file. Now, the purpose for putting this line here, line 22, is such that when you import a file, the whole file is usually run. But by having this line, the lines 23 to 26, 20, th these lines here at the bottom will not run. Because when you import it, dunder name is not equal to main. But when you run it directly, it will be equal. So in other words, so for example, if I actually run the file directly, running Python 3 and then the name of the file, it runs perfectly. It's as if that if statement's not there. It is, but it's, it's the, the if statement's returning true. OK? So when would it not be true? OK, not a good idea probably to use dashes. I changed it to an underscore. But watch this. If I create a file called test, and now if I go uh, from PYFLTK example import, and I think it was my app, right? Then let's see if this is actually going to work. So here is, and let's now let's run it, Python 3 test. And it works. No errors whatsoever. So what this means is, notice nothing ran, though. That's the important part. Nothing runs again. OK, so I go back to the code here. And now I'm going to go to uh, this thing here. And now watch this. I'm going to take out this line, OK? so. Uh, take out this line and then I'm going to uh, move these guys back okay so now watch this I'm gonna save this and now if I okay so now notice I've I, I took out that if statement now if I run it look what happens Uh oh Oh yeah, sorry, I'm running the wrong program. Of course it's gonna run if I run the program itself, but watch what happens when I run test. And let's just see what's in test, okay? That's the only thing in test. Now, but let's run it, let's run it. Oh, oh, wait, why is my program running? Exactly, this is the only line in it. So essentially, here's the point, if you import another file it'll actually run it so how do you prevent how how do you prevent the whole program from running but still be able to uh, import a class but not have the whole program run answer this is what you do ta-da now okay if I if I save this and I go to my here and I try running test now look what happens nothing 
in, because I have this if statement, the, the name is not going to be equal to main now when I import it. And that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm importing it. Okay? So I hope that was really useful for you guys. Uh, you learned a little bit about classes today and how to inherit using PYFLTK and also how to uh, import classes that you make so you don't have to copy paste code and uh, use if name, if dunder name equals dunder main. See you in the next lesson.